For the Finance Committee, we have 2250, Expenditure for ARPA Funds, MNJ Tech Community Development, 2251, Expenditure for North Royalton Power Equipment for the Cemetery, 2252, 2022 Material Bids, 2253, Amend Ordinance 17421, West Smith Reconstruction Easement, 2254, Accept Easement, West Smith Reconstruction, 2255, Woodside Green Subdivision Phase 2 Dedication Plant, 2256, FAA Grant Application, Narrative Report and ALP Update, 2257, General Liability Insurance Renewal, 2258, Budget Amendments, 2260, Expenditure over 15,000 OH uh, Associates of Chief of Police, 2261, Zoning Map Amendment, 881 Lafayette Road, I-1 to C-3, and 2262, AARP Community Challenge Grant for 2022. For special legislation, we have one item, 2259, Preserving the Historic District. <clears throat> 22128, Ray Mallert Park Capital Bill Grant. Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a quick update on this project that we've been working on. You might recall we approved a site plan through public properties uh, probably over a year ago now. And uh, this particular project is being funded through the Capital Bill Grant, uh, which has a deadline uh, for us to be under contract of June 30th, 2022 which is quickly approaching. Uh, the engineering department's currently working on the parking lot design and uh, I believe has an estimate wrapped up. And we've also engaged an environmental design group to consult and offer guidance on uh, specifications for the dog park portion of the project. We're at the point now where the grant documents have been submitted to the state and Mayor Hanwell has signed off on those. Uh, but we need to decide where the funding for the project is going to come from uh, so that we can uh, finish up the design and get the numbers um, for the project and authorization to bid in front of you. So we wanted to bring it to this meeting so we could talk about funding. Mr. Coyne, if I could. So uh, the grant requires us to say that we have the funding and where the funding is coming from in essence. So um, on council's in prep of council's question, we, and I, I think, uh, Jess, we talked about this once before, we have $33,151.41 left in the open space fund for Ward 1 uh, that could assist with these two mm -hmm. projects. But um, it's, it's obviously not near enough. Uh, so uh, I'd respectfully ask that we consider unanticipated capital I, I know council was interested in, in both of these projects and the fact that we can do it for half the cost because of the capital bill um, would, would help the city out as well. Okay, questions? The only question I have is maybe we don't take it out of uh, unanticipated capital, but maybe under the 301 would probably be better uh, because it's still going to, it's not something. I view unanticipated capital as an emergency situation. I don't think this is an emergency. And I think we have enough money in the 301 account to cover the difference. But I do think um, correct using the 33,000 from Ward 1 and any amounts that are different from that, I think the difference um, of the 142, right? And um, well, no, it would be 106. Is that right? 106 you said, right? For the city share? About 108. Oh, 108, okay, that's close. Um, so the difference there, which would be, uh, it sounds like, um, what is that, 83 or 73, 75,000? Would come from the 301 account to, to cover that. Is, does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Jess, you okay with that? Yeah. Mr. Rose? Yes, capital account for the okay. city. I'm Thank fine you. With that. So let's take the thirty-three thousand from the open space fund of Ward One, and then the seventy-five thousand from the three hundred one capital account. Okay, and just for clarification, unless this is Keith's question, but the the entirety of the Ward One, the thirty-three one fifty-one forty-one, yeah, and then whatever the the difference is, that's going to come out of the three hundred one capital. Correct. Okay, and just to clarify for you, uh, Paul, since you asked. 
The 301 is general purpose capital. All the 300 accounts are capital. 301 is general purpose capital, and then we have a, we have 388 is uh, <coughs> computer electronic tech, and then um, 389 is um, unanticipated. We have various different ones, but 301 is general purpose. Right. And, and you and John were the only two who knew that off the top of your head at this meeting. <laughs> I asked the question for the general public. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 20, 2250 expenditure for ARPA funds, MNJ Technologies Community Development. Mr. Dutton? So this is a proposal to use um, ARPA funds to purchase two laptops for the Community Development Department. Uh, one is for the Community Development Director, uh, though I have a laptop here. This is on uh, loan from the IT department and frankly they need it back. And one for our planning administrative assistant who needs a replacement of her laptop. Uh, be used for boards and commission meetings, out of office work, and attend virtual meetings and training. You have a quote there for $3,024 for two laptops from M and J Technologies furnished by the RT department. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Lamb. Is it, um, would it be a, a good idea to try to use, where are these, where are we buying these from? Where are they coming from? It's, is it? It's MNJ Technologies is the company. And is that, where is that? That's Harvey's company that uh, works with the schools. We, we do all our computer uh, purchases through, through them. Uh, because he's he's the one that set up our whole server right. system here right. and and the schools. So, so where does but where does he get the computers from? They're Dell computers, and it comes from this MNJ Technologies Direct. Local? It's probably like a wholesaler, I would imagine. No, I don't they're, think they're, they're not local. local. They're out of uh, Illinois. Yeah, they're out of yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I got an email from some people and asking if you know, like, there's a computer place. Riztech is in town. Why don't we use them? That was the question, and uh, and they thought that they were that the computers that that we were on the, on this were from Illinois. Is that they? I, I believe you're right. Uh, I, the Dell is in Illinois, but the advantage of getting them along with the school programs is because of the volume discount, we get better prices uh, by by riding on the coattails of the schools. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for answering the question. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? All aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 2251 expenditure for North Royalton Power Equipment for the cemetery. Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. This is for the purchase of a lawnmower for the cemetery department under source well contract, um, making the total purchase order $11,593. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 2252-2022 material bids for the service department. Mr. Bacoli. Thank you, Mr. President. So we're asking council for authorization to advertise and bid for our annual material bids. We're hopeful to get uh, some decent pricing with uh, the cost of everything rising as we've been uh, talking about lately. Thank you. Are you buying salt too? Salt is available, so we're hopeful that we can acquire, you know, secure a good price, but it just depends. I mean, we don't have to, like in past years, we've had to put in our bid, you know, now for next year. So we do both. This material bids allows us to um, purchase a uh, bid for water meters, uh, fire hydrants, water supplies, street uh, supplies, including salt. So then that'll be up and coming. Usually uh, that's to the state. ODOT will send out the yearly bid requirement that you're referencing. And okay. that we, I imagine we'll get within a couple of weeks and have to turn it around in two days. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Any sure. other questions? Okay. Move to approve. Bill. Bill. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 6, 2253, amend ordinance 17421, the West Smith Road reconstruction. Mr. Bacoli, I believe Patrick passed this on to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so this, this request of uh, this requests council to amend the ordinance 174-21 by increasing the fair market value estimate by $500. So a total revised um, price will be $6,655. And the emergency clause is requested. 
Um, because of the uh, right-of-way acquisition, it's a critical milestone that uh, Pat references in this DOD, ODOT project development process. Um, it could, it could um, lengthen the uh, deadline of the project if we don't use the emergency clause. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. President. Mr. Rose. I just, uh, because the last name of the property owner is Rose, I just want to be clear. It's I have no association with this Rose at all. Thank you. Okay. Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second. Includes the emergency clause. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 2254 accepted easement for the West Smith Road reconstruction. Mr. Piccoli. So again, in order to complete construction of West Smith Road between State Road and South Court Street, the city must acquire several easements and uh, purchase some properties. This ordinance will accept one of those easements. An emergency clause is requested as well for the same explanation as the uh, above referenced uh, ordinance. Okay, any questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. The second includes the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 2255, Woodside Green Subdivision Phase 2 Dedication Plan. Mr. Dutton? Uh, yes, this is the um, final plan approval for City Council for Woodside Glen uh, Phase 2. Uh, it's an instance where we had, uh, it's on Asher Brand Drive, where we had a dead end in the city, a dead end in uh, Montfall Township. This will connect the roads and create two buildable lots. Um, this was approved by the Planning Commission, and Patrick has noted the developer has submitted the required fees covering the cost of improvements as well as the cost for city inspection and street trees. Thank you. Mr. Pickle, how do we handle this again with the uh, plowing and road service? I know we have a agreement with the townships. Do we, where do we stop plowing, I guess, and stuff like that? Do you know? It hasn't been discussed, I guess, at this point. Yeah, I, yeah, I think suppose, an agreement. yeah, this section is entirely in the city, but I don't know where the plows will stop. Yeah, I don't think they just stop and drop their snow right at the border there. I don't <laughs> Not on the jurisdictional boundaries. Right, okay, I just wanted to see, because I know we have other roads in the city, a few that do the same thing, and uh, I think some with Lafayette, there's a couple mm -hmm. down there, and uh, uh, I wasn't really sure how that was gonna be handled, but okay, yeah, sure. as long as you guys can figure it out. <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 2256 FAA grant application airport narrative report and ALP update. Mr. Huber. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a request to submit to the FAA an application for a grant that would pay for the engineering of a new airport layout plan, which the FAA has requested from us. The last one we did was in 2006. We usually have to do these roughly every seven or eight years. And um, in about two more weeks, we will be requesting an amendment of the Delta contract. Delta is our engineer that oversees these kinds of projects. Um, the emergency clause is requested because the grant application must be submitted by April 11th. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second includes the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 2257, general liability insurance renewal. You know. Mayor? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as you know, we went out to um, request for proposals. Um, we're a little bit nervous because they expected the market to be high, but, but our <clears throat> current coverage was not being provided by the same carrier anymore. They were no longer handling cities. Uh, as a result, we received four proposals, um, all of them under uh, our, current, our current payment. Uh, we used Crane, Langner, and company as our broker, much like we do DS benefits for our, our health insurance. Uh, they reviewed all of the requests, and they believe it's in the best interest that the city would be served by se selection of the proposal submitted by uh, Janie Geis of Weikert Insurance and underwritten principally by Selective Insurance with the exception of the crime and airport liability coverage uh, which will remain with the incumbent Gallagher and then the uh, Tokyo Marine uh, 
cyber option uh, was presented by a, a new company. And um, by going to the uh, Weikert proposal, uh, it will save the city a little over $87,000 from this past year's premiums. And um, we, we would like it um, accepted subject to the law director's approval. They're still going through some of the, the fine details. And they, they were only able to get this um, last Tuesday, so they only had from two, Tuesday to Friday to get this recommendation out to us. So they're still drilling a little bit more, more deeply into it, uh, but they're pretty confident with this. And um, it will also need the emergency clause because it takes effect on April 1st of this year. So if we pass it tonight through finance and then the 28th um, at council with the emergency clause, then we can make that date. Thank you. Any questions? Yep. Mr. Rose. Uh, I just want, are we, we have essentially the same coverage item for item? Uh, and do we lose any coverage for saving money? There's a spreadsheet that was along with that lengthy email. Uh, yeah. some, some of it is a little bit better. Some of it is, is equal. And there may be a few that, that were a little bit less, but it was not significant enough for them to feel that this would not be the preferred uh, recommendation. So it basically nuts out to about the same? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, the other advantage I'll share for, I think the council is aware, but for the public as well, is Weikert is actually in the city of Medina, uh, right here on Court Street at the end of our, uh, well, next to Sully's, in essence. So um, it's good to have a local company. They have bid on it in, in the past, and we weren't, weren't, weren't able to uh, provide the, uh, the uh, plan to them, but in, in this case, they were very competitive. and. We prefer to keep it in the city because it's a lot easier to work with somebody locally than in Cincinnati or wherever. Thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second includes the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 2258, we have budget amendments. The first one we have is 228, which is the clinic, Cleveland Clinic Wellness Fund check. Yes. Uh, is this Keith? Yep. Um, this is the wellness funds were received. We have to appropriate to spend them. Any questions? Move to approve. All, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And I Motion that carries. That right and and 20, 22 9, which is civil service testing. We have a guest here today, Lorene. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, basically, we have a lot of testing happening. Um, Lieutenant Beck Brick Beckler retired, which is causing a ripple effect, um, and we were unprepared for that, unfortunately. So I am asking for unappropriated funds to cover um, contr for contractual services. Um, basically, that will cover our lieutenant testing and our sergeant testing, and a little bit... Um, the oral boards for the patrol testing that we're doing currently. But we're also anticipating, we've, we've collected um, applications for patrol officers and dispatch the last few weeks. Um, we've had 30 dispatch, that's our final count for 30 applicants. And for patrol, we're at 27. And um, currently we have three dispatch openings and five patrol officer openings and we're thinking we may probably, most definitely, we'll probably have to have another patrol officer test and dispatcher test in the coming year. And Nino has um, some motor equipment operator openings that we may not be able to fill internally, so we will have to advertise for that also. So there's just, and the schools, the schools are ongoing. Um, I'm collecting applications for seven, um, classifications currently, we have um, like 12 applications turned in for all seven of them, and deadlines are coming up again for those. So it's like we're constantly advertising and testing. So Let, let me ask you a question. How long are those tests good for? 
They're good for two years if we have enough people on there. But lately we've had like five people and that's what we need to consider for one opening. So after one person's hired, it's almost like we have to retest again just yep. to give the schools and the city more people to consider. Well, I guess that's the question. I mean, if you test and you only have X number of people apply, why would you think you would get more the next time you test? We, we don't always, <laughs> but we, so now we're starting to com combine the lists. Okay. Well, I was just wondering because if you spend money on the test and they all test, I mean, I, I, hopefully there's enough of a pool that you can choose from because right. I don't know how you're why there would be new people all of a sudden coming in. Mm -hmm. Maybe in a different year there may be new people, but for the same year, I, I wouldn't imagine there'd be any new people who want to do it. Right, but you're just hoping that the situations have changed with people's lives maybe, and they're, you know, um, we get different people at different times of the year. John, if I may. Yes. Ma so uh, Jim and I attend the civil service, as does Nino, and um, so we're there month after month to, to hear this, and it's it's a challenge just like we're seeing all over in, in, in industry and retail and restaurants. Um, but but we've re really made, uh, for these tests, upcoming tests, a concerted effort of different marketing strategies uh, us using Facebook. Uh, I know the police department has been to a number of um, job fairs, uh, both in Summit County and, and Medina County. I know Buckeye had one, we were there. Uh, they either had one or are planning one in Cloverleaf. So um, we're, we're trying to do as much as we can to try to draw people in. Um, but again, we're, we're limited as to, you know, do they come in and fill out the application? Can they test? Can they pass the physical fitness, you know, on the police side? And the schools, you know, so many times it's um, such, a, such a handful of people. As Lorene said, you hire one and, and now you don't have enough to certify again. Um, the commission has been generous in letting us combine the lists, which then gives us a little bit higher number. If you had two left from the old one, you have four left, you're still above the five. Um, and the, the other question we're still waiting on the law director to have a, a chance to review was um, some other cities are accepting applications for positions that they're having difficulty with like this ongoing with a notice that um, the test will be given in the future and you'll be personally notified when that test date and time is. But instead of saying, you know, it's only these three weeks or, or four weeks or whatever, by having a rolling application period, we're hopeful as well, provided we can do that legally, that we can try to have a, a larger number to test. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Lorene. Thank you. 2260 expenditure over 15,000 for the OH Associates of Ohio Associates of Chiefs of Police for the Civil Service. Um, is this you too, Lorene? Is this who is this? Yes, They're thank working. you. That would go back. That's part of what I was asking for before. Um, it's for the lieutenant test. Um, the assessment center is $5,800 for seven um, sergeants if they all participated. And um, we have 26 officers eligible to test for the um, sergeant test. So we, we're just basing it on 16 of them testing, um, and that would be $14,400. So combined, that's what the $20,200 is for the assessment center exercise. Okay. All right, any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 2261 zoning map amendment for 881 Lafayette Road from an I-1 to a C-3. Mr. Dutton? So this is the uh, zoning map amendment request by Madonna Metropolitan Housing Authority um, to change the zoning of two properties at 881 Lafayette from I-3 Industrial to C-3 General Commercial. Uh, though it's not necessary at this phase, they provided some additional information and their intent to use, utilize it for a multi-family residential development. Uh, this was heard at the March 10th Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the commission unanimously recommended approval of the amendment request. 
Um, so you have kind of a timeline there uh, recommend by, recommended by staff for uh, the public hearing to be held on 425 and then your review to begin on 59. Uh, um, so as I know, it does require public hearing and there's some uh, delay there before it can be heard. Um, I'll note that um, the applicant is working on a timeline due to a grant request. So that's why we try to get this to you as soon as possible. Thank you. I don't, I'm not sure, and I guess we have to wait till we get to council. We, we may do three readings on it. Because we don't, I mean, we've been in situations, as you know, in the past, we're getting in a lot of lawsuits and mm -hmm. some things we need to slow down. And I think zoning is probably one of them. So I don't know. Uh, when we get to the point, Mr. Huber, uh, I guess, will be involved in helping us decide that because we usually had three readings, I think, on the last rezoning. The one we did, we didn't used to do it, but things have changed. So it may be prudent for us to do that. Now, I don't know if that messes the applicant's schedule up, but, you know, I don't know. It may be what it is because that's, you know, we have to be more cautious, I guess, in, in, in approving these things. So, yeah, and I wasn't suggesting approval on the ninth. I would just say that would start your review. Um, I, I don't think they have a definite timeline for when they need to submit, but uh, they do have a. Uh, I think May was what they thought it was going to be. Mr. Okay. Coyne. Yes, <clears throat> Mayor. So I've had a number of meetings with Skip uh, regarding this, and is the council kind of familiar where this is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I won't bore you with that then. Um, so this is kind of a th part of the three-phase approach that they're looking at. Uh, the last phase is affordable housing. This is transitional housing. And then before that is a homeless shelter. And because this land was available, this was the, the most easy for them to get off the ground the fastest. And they're still working on the other two phases. Uh, the grants he's going to apply for, they know it's going to be sometime in May, but they don't know is it going to be May 1st. Uh, or May 30th. They won't know until the guidelines come out and the deadline is included in that. So um, uh, I ask Andrew to try to, to get this to you and, and keep us on as close a schedule for their benefit as we could. But Skip did share with me that if this passes through the Finance Committee and is subject ultimately to council approval, that generally for the grant application, that would, that would be sufficient. Okay, good. So. Yeah, because I just think that, you know, in the rezonings, we probably should, you know, look a little closer at them from, yes, our, sir. from our past history. Un understood. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yes. Ms. Sarah? Um, so, I, I took some time to read over this here over the weekend, and, um, and I have a number of questions about this. I'm not so sure tonight is the appropriate time for these questions. Maybe I mm -hmm. hold on to them for the public hearings. Would that be the correct thing to do? It's, yeah, it's, if, you'd, if you'd like, um, the applicant may be there for the public hearings if some of those are for the applicant as well. Because I know I, I've already received an email in regards to this, mm -hmm. and so we do have uh, people in the city that certainly have their opinions on, on this. Um, and it's been a while since I've been on council, so you know I gotta get caught up to speed. Um, but do have questions, and certainly if I have questions, then other people in the community have them as well. And I just want to kind of present them and informational. Okay. Any other questions? Um, just real quick. Yes. Just to clarify, that? this is located on the property that was donated by the county, correct? Correct. Actually, yeah. actually there were two parcels. Yeah. So, so the one next to the juvenile court annex which is immediately south of the juvenile detention center used to be the new horizons mm -hmm. location now it's being used as office space for the juvenile court so there was a uh, about half of this land was owned by the county immediately adjacent there was a similar parcel immediately to the lake road side of that which then, instead of five apartments, gave them the ability to do 10 or 11. So I arranged a meeting with um, the former owner of Medina Plating, Sean Ritchie, who owns that little car repair place now that used to be feeding Medina County. He also owned that vacant land. And when Skip and I met with him and told him what the plan was and what the purpose was, he, he felt that uh, this was a this was a good thing to happen in the city and uh, was willing to sell it to MMHA for what he paid for it. 
And by doing that, we were able to, we weren't, they were able to combine those two parcels for a, a larger project. I just wanted to clarify that for the public because I also have received uh, several emails, text messages about this same project. And I just wanted to make it clear that MMHA is a county agency. Part of that property was donated by the county. The complaints I'm receiving are that people don't want transitional housing in Ward 1. And my answer is, we have the most affordable space here and we need transitional housing. So I just wanted that for the public's knowledge to know that these pieces all came together and that's how it came to be in that particular spot. And also, so was it, is this part of discussion of the comprehensive plan, I assume, also? For this for housing located here? I mean, because no. you're going through the comprehensive plan, I'm sure you're designating areas and stuff. No. Not that specifically, no. Okay. So it would just be spot zoning? Yeah. All right, so we got to look at that, too? Well, I mean, okay. you're looking at one sp spot The copper to plan doesn't get that detailed into specific parcels. No, so. it doesn't. Well, yeah, it doesn't, but it gives areas of where we target certain things, I guess. And we just, I just want to know, because if there's no other uh, C3 zoning around there, you know, would, is it going to cause a problem? I mean, I guess we got to look at those issues, yeah. too. Well, there's C3, well, there's C3 one, right one there. lot away, yeah. Is there? Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, Mr. Rose can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the, the applicant indicated it would not be transitional housing. It would be uh, residents living there uh, rather than short term. Because I did ask that question at the meeting. And um, the, the answer was that, well, my, my, I, my question was transitory environment, you know, people just coming and going. And he said it would be permanent, a permanent family facility. Okay. Okay. So right. thank you. All right. Any other questions? No, I'm just happy right. that we might have a permanent family facility. <laughs> I, actually, I, I do. I do have another question. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So when I looked at that, and I'm very familiar with that with that area, so this this location was picked primarily because of being cost effective. Was there consideration in this location because it may be desirable? Uh, to uh, the local industry there being on Lake Road and Smith Road? I mean, I can't speak for the applicant, but I, I would assume that was part of the rationale, yeah. Okay. Yes, so, I can answer that. Yeah. Okay. In, in the discussions that I had with them, that was part of it, okay. that it would be within, within walking distance of our industry. So then my next question is then, does Medina Transit go down there that could also assist in, in uh, the transportation needs for some of the people that may be living there? Well, Medina Transit has um, a system now set up. It's an app on your phone where you can go on, and if you do need assistance and you're working through a social service agency, that social, social service agency is able to purchase direct rides. It's almost like an Uber. So they can set this so up So they themselves. can set this up. They can set it up themselves if they okay. would like to pay for the service, or if they are receiving assistance from a mm -hmm. social service agency, they can cover that as well, and that will take care of wherever they need to go, work, okay. doctor, grocery store, wherever. So you do have that ability to do that right from your phone now. All right. well, that's, that's a good, good idea. So even though if there's not a bus going through right then, the county still offers you a service to get you from point A to point B. So I looked at the, at the, at the plans and there's 11 apartments in this building, but only 10 of which are going to be available for residences. Is that correct? So I'm seeing 11 units in there, and I just want to make clear that we're not reviewing site plans or, or layouts of buildings. We're, we're only looking at the rezoning of the property okay. from one zoning right. to the other. If it gets approved and the project goes forward, the planning commission will review that the we'll, site. We and, can dissect our, yeah. the rest of the things going mm -hmm. forward. But it looks to me like there's 11 units yeah. in the plans. Okay, then I'll hold my other questions until then. Any other questions? All right, so we've got, uh, I don't think we take any action on that. We just keep it moving forward. Uh, I think there's a public hearing. I don't, I don't think we have to approve the zoning map change until after the public hearing. Uh, it's my understanding, right, Kathy? Uh, we have one addition. We have item 22062, which you guys don't have on your agenda, but it's AARP Community Challenge Grant for 2022, and Mr. Uh, would like to add this to the agenda. Thank you. Barbara. 
<laughs> and we won't tell them what I have to pay with. I, I know. <laughs> uh, the mayor found this grant, and we are going to apply uh, to see if we can get the pickleball courts at Ray Mallard Park paid for in full by this grant because there's no match for it. And then we can uh, redesignate the money in the uh, ARP funds for something else. And what's the timing of this grant again? The, the, uh, the submission application is due next week. And the, when is the approval or pending approval supposed to be determined by? Does, uh, it, does it give you a date? How many months? June. June. Okay. As I recall. Okay. Any questions on that? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is there anything else that uh, anybody wishes to bring before Finance Committee this evening? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Paul, could we do this? Could we do this?